After years of wedded bliss, Nick couldn't take it any longer. Melissa, through no fault of her own, had grown up in a home without cable TV or a VCR. If that last sentence confused you, Google it. This had resulted in her having very little pop culture movie knowledge. In order to right this injustice, the duo will watch and discuss movie after movie until Melissa has caught up with the zeitgeist of her generation. Welcome to their journey. Good evening. Good evening. It's huh. movie time. It is movie time. I do you know what we're watching this week? No, I don't know what we're watching. I know. Well, you know, I never know. I try to keep it a surprise, but you you never know. You could just spy things or or see things up in the sky or wherever, like written in the clouds or the stars. There's nothing up your sleeves. There's nothing in the hat. Nothing. There's nothing in the wardrobe. There's nothing in the wardrobe. <laughs> All right. So you don't know what we're watching. Nope. Okay. I'm going to tell you now. It is a film that I'm oddly excited to show you. And it's even odder that I watched this at a young age and thought it was so good. Oh. All right. Okay. It's a film called Cocoon. <gasps> Cocoon. Do you, Whoa. Do you know about this movie? Okay. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really, but. Have you heard of it? Um, Sounds like you have. Isn't it like, doesn't it have Jeff Goldblum in it? And there's like. We'll have to find out, won't we? I was, I was kind of like crossing that with the fly. Oh, because yeah, there's pod in that. Yeah. 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 And like, I think cocoon has like pod cocoon things in it. Huh. Okay. And like watery fluid scenes. Watery fluid scenes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> like, now you got me thinking about <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's, the, like his, the fly. And there's a lot of different fluid scenes in that movie. I know. I know. But um, yeah, cocoon. What else do you know about it? Um, or think you know? I is is it by the same guy who did the fly? It's not, <laughs> but I for some reason I think it is. It is not by the same guy who did the fly. It's science fiction. Although you know what? Last time I didn't even know the fly was was a Soddenberger film. So like, yeah. Anyway, Wait, there was another movie you didn't know was by him. Oh, you're right. You're right. I did know it for the fly. It was um the Dead Zone. The Dead Zone. Yeah. The Dead Zone. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, it's... It, oh, is Christopher Walken in this one? Sure. Is he was in the dead zone? So you think Jeff Goldblum and Christopher Walken <laughs> are in this film? I No, I don't think Christopher Walken's in the film, but I'm thinking... I don't know. Is this... Do they travel places? <laughs> do they go in the cocoon and then come out in the past? <laughs> I'm really... I think they might. Okay. What else do you think might or, happen? Or maybe it's like a way that an alien takes over the planet. They like, I don't know, they plant cocoons An alien here? takes over the planet. <laughs> okay. They Time travel, oh alien takeover, or wait, there's got to be a third option. Time I don't think I'm hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said Sonnenberg earlier. I meant Cronenberg. It's, it's Cronenberg. Okay. David Cronenberg. Okay. Uh, I would never be able to forgive myself if I didn't correct that. Yeah, good correction. Thank you. Uh, okay, so you think Jeff Goldblum's in this film. You think it's by David Cronenberger. <laughs> you think that there are pods that people go in to travel through time to take yeah. over the world. Yeah. Am I describing flatliners, though? Is that <laughs> Have you seen flatliners? No. <laughs> That's going they're on all, the list. They're all in like a web of science fiction from that wow. era. okay. They're just tangled up okay. together. <laughs> Okay. Do you know when this movie was made? Like nineteen eighty two. Eighty two. Nineteen. Well, of course it was. Okay. So, uh, anything else you want to add about the plot? Because this is the most robust plot you've provided yet in well, the I've, podcast. I've given two alternative plots, like the alien takeover or right. the time travel. Oh, okay. Um, or it's. Oh, okay. Here we go. You've been watching too much Peripheral, by the way. <laughs> yeah, time travel takeovers. Yeah. Maybe it's college students doing like um, some sort of experiment. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? I, th I think I know. I think that's it. That might be it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. Let's, I want to go see it now. Uh, are, yeah. How are you, are you feeling going into this one? <laughs> I don't know why, but I w I've always been kind of afraid of this movie. <laughs> Is it scary? <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, so you're afraid of we're about to watch Cocoon and you're afraid. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. What um, what would you like to to use for your capture? Like, what words would you use to describe this for your tagline? You know, like if you were, you know, twelve students go in. <laughs> Does anyone come out? <laughs> All right. Let's go see okay. if anyone survives. Okay. <laughs> From the farthest corner of a distant galaxy and the deepest feelings of the human soul comes a fantasy to fill your heart. I feel tremendous. I'm ready to take all the world. Oh, oh. It is everything you've dreamed of. It is nothing you expect. Oh, I can keep a secret. I won't tell anybody. It's hard to know who to trust. It is the mystery of an awesome secret. It is the miracle of everlasting life. We'll never be sick. We won't get any older and we won't ever die. Beyond the innocence of youth and the wisdom of age lies the wonder of Cocoon. 20th Century Fox presents Film from the producers of Jaws and the director of Splash, Cocoon. That movie was amazing. I know. I loved it. And it is my favorite movie we have watched on the podcast so far. What? It has totally barreled its way to number one. Wow. What I'm was... also yeah. going to set it up on the shelf of... Favorite sci-fi movies of all time. I told you I was excited it's, to show you this it one. It was so good. Thank you, Ron Howard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, wow. Are you disappointed? You don't sound disappointed. In it, no. What, what would I be disappointed in? Well, you thought it was going to be about, what was it? Uh, <laughs> I don't even oh, remember. time traveling. Time traveling aliens or... <clears throat> oh yeah it was you had some pretty interesting ideas about what you thought it was going to be um nothing i thought i it didn't compare to anything i was expecting awesome um, yeah is this a sci-fi film i was just thinking like what genre is this movie oh this is totally sci-fi okay it's based on aliens like you can't get much more sci-fi than that well I, that's fair but it's also a drama and a comedy. But I mean, sci-fi is fun that the way. The best sci-fis are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. So uh, do you want to give us a, a quick summary? Oh, it's or just so summer? good. It was so good. Huh. Okay. So the best thing about this movie is that you are... I was watching it having no idea what was going to happen. And that's how you're. it's like kind of revealed to you um, what's yeah. going on. You're discovering it. Mm -hmm. Through a couple main characters. And it centers around this retirement village in Florida. <laughs> yes, it does. What? Uh, what? Yeah. Um, so amazing. Um, these three old chaps, they like to like sneak next door to this millionaire mansion, go into the pool house and swim. And that's kind of like their their like they're little the bad fun boys. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're exactly. the bad boys of the retirement village. Yeah, one of them, you know, they still drive, mm -hmm. so they can like do things and pick up things for the other people there. But um, yeah, so they do this, and they're just hilarious. They are. They're like they're like teenage boys. They're they're very much like teenage boys. So it's like the whole. Uh, circle of life, you know, you you just you get old enough, and then you start to go backwards in time. They were like more. It was more realistic than grumpy old men, like their characters. We just watched yeah. two movies with like older people. Yeah, I don't know. Um, grumpy old men. I've seen some grumpy old men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. This was like what I think you want old people to be, older people to be like. Um. Yeah, maybe you just didn't know that many grumpy old men. Maybe that's it. I didn't know <laughs> but, your grandpa for long enough. <laughs> no, my grandpa wasn't one of them. But um, no, this I would agree on the whole. I just wanted to point out you could find some grumpy old men. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like it felt like I was watching my grandpa. 
they mm-hmm. totally like my grandpa was probably that age when this movie came out. Yeah. Um, maybe a little he was a little younger than them, but he was right around that age. So and I was around the age of the grandson. So mm-hmm. it was like it was like being with my and I visited my grandpa down in Florida in a retirement oh, community. That's crazy. Yeah. So like it was lots of cool vibes for me down memory lane watching this one. Me too. It made me miss my grandmas a mm-hmm. lot. But yeah, it made you I just love being around older people. Yeah. I love older people. And so it was really it was just really nice to like be watching them and their mm-hmm. lives as they experience this like unprecedented event. Um, but yeah, yeah it definitely, it. <clears throat> it was nice watching some grandmas again. Mm-hmm. It was really nice. So um, yeah, they're, while they are sneaking over one day, they see what? I was just thinking, they would probably call it running around. That's what my grandma always used to say. So used to say, we used to run around. <laughs> I always pictured them just, you know, jogging everywhere. <laughs> my mom used to say, um, I used to hang out with my chum. And I used to picture someone ladling chum, chum. in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Stay on topic. On topic. So, um, yeah. So they overhear that someone's bought the house. Mm. Oh, does that ruin all their fun? Mm-mm. No, because Mm-mm. these people are gone like all day. But these weird things start to appear in the in the pool. They look kind of like rocks. Yeah. Um, covered in barnacles, maybe eggs. I don't know. But as they start swimming in the pool around these things, they notice that they start feeling younger. Oh, amazing. Better. Yes. Um, they have more, I don't know. Vim and zip, vigor. Yeah. <laughs> zip in their step. <laughs> and elsewhere. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, you know, the people that bought the mansion... They're out on a boat every day with this other guy who they hired. Steve <clears throat> Gutenberg, if I remember right. Oh, okay. I can't believe you've never seen one of his films. He is one of the like 80s actors. Yeah, his face screams that. Yes. <laughs> he seems yes. like an 80s person I should know, but I didn't. Yeah. I don't know him. I, well, I mean, there's there's a couple movies I have on the list. I have him in it and there we'll see him again. Okay. We'll see him again. Steve Gutenberg. Gutenberg, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice name. Yeah. So he's taking these people out and um, he's, you know, just their captain of the boat and um, they're diving and bringing these egg things back in like every day. Which is a part like I remember them doing the diving stuff. Mm -hmm. I did not. I was probably so young that I didn't understand the Atlantis connection. And the fact that it like I was nerding out this time because I didn't know that or remember that. And so the fact that it was the whole alien Atlantis connection too was just like a <laughs> such a beautiful nerd moment. <laughs> was it like a Stargate nerd moment? Kind or? of, you know, yeah. I mean, ancient aliens. Yeah. Aliens. <laughs> the 10,000 years ago, they had to evacuate and there were 20 who volunteered <laughs> to stay in stasis. Yeah, in these pods. And yeah. now the aliens, oops, I spilled it. So they're, oh, sorry. they're really not My humans. They're, they're not aliens. Humans. The captain of the ship finds out because he has a crush on one of the, the women. The yes, only woman. The only woman, yeah. And um, he <laughs> finds himself with a vantage point of seeing into her cabin room. Yes. And um, she gets undressed, which means... She, she sees some skin. He takes her skin <laughs> off. Because she takes her skin off. <laughs> She's like this glowing... Uh, Actually, they're really cute. They are really the cute. aliens are really cute. The little pudge around their eyes. Yeah. I loved that as a kid. And as you an adult. did? Yeah, she is so cute. There's like the... It's like they, I don't, for better, it looks like they've been boxed and they're mm. like swollen around the eyes. Yeah. And but in a cute way, I, I know that sounds bad the way I just described it. It was really cute. Yeah. You want to hug them. Yeah, you do. Or at least like glide around with them. They mm-hmm. glide and yeah. they're, yeah. <clears throat> their movements are very fluid when yeah. they're not humans. They're ethereal. They're very ethereal. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> they're collecting more eggs. Yes. And, um. Cocoons. Cocoons. This isn't, yeah. I mean, we're getting close to Easter. The, the team of the aliens. And the, and the old people are having the time of their life. They yeah. have a second life. They are like going out to the clubs. They're break dancing. The break dancing. With all the young riffraff. Yes. They are just having a blast. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they finally, the aliens come back one time. And they are discovered, like, the old people discover that they're aliens. The aliens mm-hmm. discover that the old people have been swimming. And this is the coolest part. 
the the lead alien who's played by the guy who does Chris Farley's dad. Brian Dennehy. Okay. He's a really cool <laughs> in Tommy Boy, yeah. Okay. You think you think he's gonna be like, you have to stop and like yeah. you can't come back, but he like listens to them mm-hmm. and he says okay. Um p- part of the reason is because one of the old people who was swimming in it, he had cancer and yeah. he didn't have long to live. Mm-hmm. But after he started swimming in the water, um his cancer was gone. Mm-hmm. It was he was healed. Mm-hmm. And um so the alien was like he just took it's not that he took pity on them, but I feel like he just kind of he empathized. It it reminded me a lot of like when you're raising children and you step outside of like, I have things to do as a parent and you just listen to where they're at mm. and their problems. Mm-hmm. And then you go, it's not that big of a deal for me to like, whatever, not clean up the Legos. So sure. You can swim in the healing water. Exactly. Because my buddies, like I've waited 10,000 yeah. years to like revive them, mm-hmm. but you're not going to take all the power away from this water. Yeah. yeah. Um. So things kind of, tenuously continue Mm -hmm. and they actually become good friends with the aliens they're like playing poker Mm -hmm. over there and that was a good montage (laughs) right love an 80s montage (laughs) but um what how does this go off the rails uh well it goes off the rails uh when (laughs) one of the guys starts getting really rambunctious and he steps out on his lady like they're all out in the town and he's like i want to keep going and his wife's like oh i'll come with you and he's like no, I'm good. You you go back with everybody else. And he goes and he picks up some waitress or something. Mm-hmm. And then so that starts a rift in their relationship, him and his wife. And then later at like a breakfast, he uh, they get, he gets into a fight with someone and the orderlies come over to try and separate him. And he's just kind of riled up and he starts boxing with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And having the, more strength than he should. Yes, exactly. And, and the other people in this home or the retirement village, they were suspecting Mm-hmm. Something was up. Some yeah. of them were anyway. They yeah, were like, yeah. why is your wife suddenly climbing trees? Like, that's weird. Yeah. Um, that's a real example from the movie. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like someone was shouting like, they found the fountain of youth. And then there's this like old person stampede next door to the pool. And yeah. they all go in. Yep. And that's, <clears throat> it's too many people. They absorb too much of the energy. They're probably like, yeah, 100 people in the pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then- the aliens come back and they're like, no, no, get out, get out. And um, they open one of the pods and yeah. their alien friend dies. Like yeah. he didn't, he doesn't revive. And, and they'd like never experienced death before or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so sad. But this mm-hmm. is another thing where you don't like, I didn't expect. I know. What yeah. happens next to happen. It was just mm-hmm. wonderfully surprising. Um but one of the older men comes back to apologize mm-hmm. and they kind of just talk like, like dude to dude, mm-hmm. like straight talk. And, um, and he's like, how, you know, can we help you in any way? And then they, I don't know who comes up with it, but they come up with the idea to like, just put the pods back in the ocean mm-hmm. and the aliens can come back. And save the rest of them. Yeah, another 10,000 years or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not all is lost. And again, the alien, the lead alien's like, yeah, okay, let's do it. (laughs) Just goes ahead with it. Yeah. It's wild. I know. So that means they have all this room on their ship Mm -hmm. for a a trip. And they're like, would you like to come with us? You seem like you're really enjoying what we have. Yeah. That's the crazy part, too, is they're like, all right, we had 20 people to pick up. And now we're not bringing those 20 people. So let's bring 100 with us. <laughs> like, I don't know the math on that. but It was a little less than 100. Because <clears throat> they all fit on that Yeah, boat. there was probably like 50. But, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. this this part of the movie was sad for me because. Oh, yeah. You really didn't like this part. Yeah. there. Well, this. What about you? Like, yeah. there's this boy. Yeah. Who the loves grandson. to visit his grandpa. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he like goes there all the time. And he even told his grandpa. I don't, I, I'd rather hang out with you than other kids. Mm-hmm. And like, that's like this sweet relationship you need to pour into. Mm-hmm. And the grandpa's like, I'm going to go live forever and explore space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's rough. I mean, I don't have anything else to say except that was the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Tell 
Tough love. Tough love. Walk it off. Walk it off. <laughs> oh, your dad's not going to be around anymore? Go go to school. Get get on with it. Your grandpa's going to leave and be a mortal alien? Suck it up. Don't think you're staying home sick for that. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a... Yeah, yeah. That's a weird one. You think about... I don't know. He was probably he'd probably live what another five years on Earth maybe, where he was. Yeah, Something you like did that. this. I did this math. I'm right? I'm way too mm-hmm. rational about it. I'm like, well, five years on Earth, and then he dies, or he could go into space and be an immortal alien, and then in ten thousand years come back and check up on his great 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 grandson or daughter. Yeah, I see that as selfish, to me, like because. What about like pouring into the next generation so that they technically he already did. <laughs> <laughs> he he set the ship sailing. I I mean relationship <laughs> the relationship. I know I I know. I see your point. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a hard choice. He wasn't like casual about it. He, no, he didn't. He, he really away. thought about it. You know. Yeah. Well, at the end, um, they're all making their break on the boat. Oh man, you're getting into the yeah. Sorry, you're just kind of getting into I think. Part of the reasons, like the the meaning of the movie too, it's like, uh, like as you grow, like when you grow through childhood, through teenage, through into adulthood, and get married, it's like you increasingly have these sacrificial moments in your life. You know, when you get married, you sacrifice in that relationship, and then when you have kids, that's nonstop sacrificing, right? And then it it just kind of continues. And then the interesting part about the movie is they really combat that, like. Is there a part where you stop and you think about yourself? But I mean, technically, he was kind of thinking about him and his wife. He wasn't being completely selfish like he wanted to be with his wife. So anyway, it's it's an interesting thing to think about. Mm-hmm. You're not that kind of being. You become that kind of being. Can you grow out of that? Like, it's an interesting concept. Anyway. I think I fall more um, in line with the guy who stayed. There was one... Um, yeah. older man who had a wife with Alzheimer's, yeah. Rose was her name, and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. He's like, this is not the natural way, and um, like, we're staying here. We're not going to go. Even, I think Rose- She died. She dies in the movie. If yeah. she hadn't died, I guarantee you he would have said, let's go to space. He totally would have. You, you could so? You could see it he on his face. He was resistant. He was resistant to, pool, to it. He wouldn't go in the pool. But once she died, he went over to try and get the magic of the pool. He went over there to do that. And he oh, even asked he them. Did. He asked them if they could revive her. And they were like, no, I'm sorry. We can't. Well, he wasn't. So yeah, he, he had was the choice to save Rose. Yeah, he had the choice. Do I want to live without her forever or just, yeah. you know, pass away kind of thing? Yeah. And he made that choice. So It was such a sweet movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess you'd be the 80s mom in this one then. I would be the grandparents because I'd be like, I love you, but come on. (laughs) And then you'd be like the 80s mom. Yeah. Well, I don't. She was really clueless. I don't think I want to be there. I guess she she didn't know what was going on the whole time. That's true. She was like completely clueless. That's a fair point. Point rescinded. Sorry. (laughs) I was just thinking about like ones that stayed behind. Mm, That's funny. So, yeah. So they. That actually leads to the next point in the movie is the mom, the boy knows the grandpa makes the classic mistake. Never trust a kid in a movie. Just don't do it. It never turns out well. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, the kids constantly get everybody into trouble. (laughs) List any movie. The kids are always, they make the noises. They do the things. They get you into trouble. The zombies will come and get you. So, yeah, he tells, he tells this, the grandson, you know, I'm going to be taken off. Going into space, mm-hmm. but you can't tell your mom. <laughs> well, the mom kind of makes him tell. Kind of. And he's he's a good little kid, so he does. He does. That's what I'm saying, yeah. It's just... Anyway, that leads to the plot point of all of a sudden, everybody notices all of the old people are gone, <laughs> and then they round up the police, and they get on boats, and they're chasing them. And Yeah, the Coast Guard's there. It's, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. final showdown on the water. Mm-hmm. And then the spaceship is there, and it does this cool thing where it obscures everything with fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no one can see, and it just lifts the whole boat up out of the air. It actually reminded me of Nope. What reminded you of... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The the thing could, like, you know, make things obscured, like in cloud and mist yeah. and stuff. Yeah. 
That's cool. true. That was cool. Huh. I wonder if that factored into it when Jordan Peele wrote it. Anyway. So the old people get their wish. They get to go and live forever and like explore other planets. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is the captain of the boat. Yeah. Who like really liked this alien girl. He He doesn't go. He doesn't go. He has nothing here. Like he was about to lose his boat in the beginning. He had no money. Yeah. He had people after him for money. Mm -hmm. And he didn't go. What? <laughs> uh, the only thing I can think of, the reason he would stay is because of he would never be around a woman his age again. And he was still young enough to really value that kind of relationship. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I can think of. Because, uh, yeah, just based on how he he was acting. Yeah. But he also was like very casual about like, well, I'll see you later kind of a thing. Like expecting them to come back. Yeah. It's almost like. They knew there would be a Cocoon 2. Is there a Cocoon 2? Maybe. Did Ron Howard direct it? I don't know. You really don't know? Which part? (laughs) That Ron Howard directed it? I don't know if he directed it, but I know it exists because I actually grabbed it instead of Cocoon. And when I went to go like (laughs) check it out, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the one I want. Nice. I don't think I've even seen it. Ooh. So that could be one we both hadn't seen. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Such a good movie. I really, really liked this movie. Oh, you know, I, the actor who, uh, his name was Hume. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Croin- Croinen? Who was he? H- Hume Croinen. He was the guy who um, he stepped on on his wife and okay. he, he boxed with the guys. He actually was a Golden Glove boxer. Really? Yeah. And he like he lost, he was blind in one eye. If you notice, he kind of, it seemed like he had a lazy eye. It's because he was blind wow. in one eye. And he couldn't see that. Well, obviously, he's blind. So during that scene, he actually knocked one of those guys out because he couldn't properly see. And no he totally way. knocked one, one of the, the orderlies? orderlies. Yes. <laughs> he hit the guy and knocked him oh, out. Oh, but he deserved it. He totally did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. His you depth know, he, perception is. He has yeah. like the body of a of a boxer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Totally. You yeah. can see that. Totally. And Jessica Tandy. From uh, Driving yep. Miss Daisy, mm-hmm. she played his wife. Correct. She is his wife. I'm pretty sure they were married in real life. What? Yes. That's happy. Yeah, they had a couple. There's another movie I want to show you, too, that has them in it. And Really? They are a married couple in that one, too. Aww. Yeah. Have you ever seen Batteries Not Included? Uh, no, I don't think oh, so. That's another great movie. All right. That one's going on. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I think... Wow. What was your what was your absolute favorite part of the movie? Oh dear. Cuz there's so many good parts. Was there one that really like I don't know. Mm-hmm. That really stuck out to you? I love how like the movie starts, the laying out of the mystery. Yeah. Um It doesn't start slow, but it just plops you in. Um gosh. It has such a great build to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm trying to express. It mm-hmm. has a this not not too slow, not too fast build yeah. and it just kind of reveals things to you and yeah. you're just in it from the from the beginning it starts. My favorite part has got to be the first time the old men realize they're feeling young and when you see one of them do a cannonball <laughs> in the pool. I love that part. Yeah, that was really great. It's just cool seeing them too like feeling like uh energized and at home in their bodies again you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. It, it's just a really cool vibe in the movie hmm. yeah um what do you do you think this one holds up well yeah definitely some of the like special effects mm-hmm. are eh, like you know which ones are making you eh? the um i think in the beginning there's like some space scenes mm. Oh, the like seeing the ship and stuff like that. Yeah, those were, those don't hold up as great. Yeah, but everything else, like the cocoons, look really good. Well, they're all practical. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the aliens looked really good too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, awesome. Um, if you were in a retirement home in your nineties, <laughs> what would you do if you were energized? Like oh. that. <clears throat> Oh my. Um da- dancing would be at the top of my list. What kind of dancing? Oh, well, like the kind we do. The Friday kind, nights. The kind we do. 
Okay. I'm a jumper. Like I jump a lot when I'm dancing uh-huh. and I have a feeling that won't last forever. So if I could get that <laughs> back at when I'm 90, I okay. would be jumping all over the place. Literally. Nice. Um, Doing and- a little ska maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, and also like, um, like pottery. I'd probably want to do that again because it probably won't be able to at 90. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I haven't spent much time thinking about what I won't do at 90. Oh, well. Yeah, that's so. typically not something I think about either. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What about you? I would definitely just stay up a lot. Like go on 24-hour movie binges and just watch movie after movie. Wow. That's a young man's game right there. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and of course, I would go to a discotheque. And I would, <laughs> complain, to, and I would complain about how loud it was. <laughs> and ironically, I'd be able to handle it, but I'd also be old. So people would think I was just being curmudgeon. So I'd be like this walking this weird line. Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you think the message of this movie was? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like there's something about being young at heart. Mm-hmm. And um, but also like trying to get something that you're that you don't have it's weird because you know they were they were chasing after reclaiming their youth it was they were some people were claiming they had the fountain of youth Mm -hmm. and like the reason that's always bad is because that isn't the natural order of things Mm. um except for the immoral jellyfish but yeah right That's always an exception. That's always the exception. <laughs> but like in this movie, they get it. They get to have it. So I'm not sure what that is. Is that like a dare to dream sort of message? Or I don't know. But they they kind of they break they break all they break the natural rule and they get away with it. Uh, yeah, they do. I mean, they do. But, but even in doing it, though, like. Anything worth getting is like sacrifice, right? Like we were talking earlier about how, you know, having relationships is sacrificial, having children is sacrificial. Like even them getting the thing, they still had to sacrifice a lot. They would get a lot, sure, but you sacrifice like what you're saying, that relationship with the people you have here, you know, so can't get around it. With great power comes great responsibility. Wrong movie. Yeah, no, I don't think Wrong that's movie. it. That's not it. <laughs> I just think, too, it's like, it's about listening. Like, people, just the way that the alien, I love the way the aliens interacted with the humans Me in this too. movie. Yeah, they were so cool. Yeah. They, it, it was very much, to me, like parents talking to kids. Hmm. And just like, oh, it's so sweet. And sometimes they were slightly stern because they needed to be stern with them. I mean, yeah. you could also say that was like God talking to us as well. Could be. Because they had like this immense power. I mean, yeah. we don't even really know much about the aliens. Like, True. We don't. We only know very little yeah. about the aliens in this movie, but they had they had great power and longevity. And, and scuba suits. <laughs> and slickers or whatever those are called on a boat. The rain jackets. Macintosh? Macintosh? I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Anyway, wow. Well, until Cocoon the Return. Oh, wait, I want to say oh. one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Um, The dolphins. They oh. were one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah. They were um, in the very beginning when the ship first came to the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, they were in the ocean, like, chattering at it. Yeah. And it reminded me of Replay. Do you remember that book? Uh, Yeah. And in that book... Someone writes a story or a movie about um, dolphins and intelligence, and it kind of like unlocks the consciousness of the world. Do you oh, remember right. that? Vaguely, yes. So it reminded me of that, and I thought it was going to go because this was the very beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the dolphins were like yelling at the spaceship and swimming. Uh-huh. And <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I thought they were going to, I thought wow. the movie was going to be about the dolphins in the beginning. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> The uh, dolphins reminded me of Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, where the whales were the things oh, yeah. that the aliens cared about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they had to go back in time to get them to bring them to the future or else they would have destroyed the planet or something. But these dolphins were always around the ship. So every yeah. time the aliens went out, 
Mm -hmm. with that the captain Mm -hmm. um they were just swimming along and kind of like hanging out with them the whole time yep that was cool too yeah that was very cool i couldn't end without mentioning the dolphins of course (laughs) they're uh, a fun and frolicky species and if you haven't read replay you should read it you totally should it's a great book yeah and ron howard could make a movie about it that'd be awesome if ron howard made a movie about it wouldn't it yeah, I remember thinking that book would translate very well to a film. Yeah. Anywho. We're really off topic tonight. We are, but Great hey. Great movie. I loved it. It was fantastic. Hopefully the next one will be just as good. Okay. See you later. See you later.